except for the huge debt of love you owe one another. When you love others, you complete what the law has been after all along. The law code, don't sleep with another person's spouse, don't take someone's life, don't take what isn't yours, don't always be wanting what you don't have, and any other don't you can think of finally adds up to this. Love other people as well as you do yourself. You can't go wrong when you love others. When you add everything up in the law code, the sum total is love. But make sure you don't get so absorbed and exhausted in taking care of all your day-by-day -day obligations that you lose track of time and doze off, oblivious to God. The night is about over. Dawn is about to break. Be up and awake to what God is doing. God is putting the finishing touches on the salvation work He began when you first believed. We can't afford to waste a minute. We must not squander those precious daylight hours in frivolity and indulgence and sleeping around and dissipation and bickering and grabbing everything in sight. Get out of bed and get dressed. Don't loiter and linger waiting for the very last minute. Dress yourselves in Christ. Be up and about. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. I drive my bike out in the county yesterday, pretty part of the county, all by myself, and all of a sudden I heard a and I knew a motorcycle was coming up. And he rode by me quickly, not all that unusual. What was a little bit unusual was that he had a helmet. What was sadly not unusual was this helmet was not on his head. It was securely fastened to the side of his motorcycle, protecting it, I'm sure, from whenever he might slide. I thought about the stupidity of it. I also thought about sort of where we live. Now, this is going to be heresy to some people. I know where we live. We live in a state where it is against the law to drive your car without a seatbelt on, but it is perfectly within the law to drive without a helmet on. We like our liberties. Not quite Texas, but sometimes we think we want to be. We like our liberties in this place we live. So let me say it plainly. Whatever the laws are, it is not within the liberty of a person of Christ to do whatever makes them feel good, whatever they want to do. It is not within our liberty as persons who follow Christ to just simply be about us. You hear people say all the time, well, it's not doing anyone else harm, what's the problem? You hear something that I think is even um, both more comical and sadder, well, I'm only harming myself. What's the problem? God's business for us is about something bigger than just doing no harm. I came across a saying this week. Uh, I thought it was worth repeating. To do no harm is the praise of a stone, not a man. To do no harm is the praise of a stone not a man. The best a stone can do is not hurt somebody. That is not the best a man or a woman. Paul and, and Jesus sometimes agree, seem to agree, no more so than what I've just read to you from Romans. There Paul sounds a whole lot like Jesus. The sum total of the law, he says, as Jesus had said, is to love your neighbor. And then he says, in what sounds a lot like Jesus' warning, don't wait to get started. The return of Christ is soon. Don't stay around in your darkness when the light is shining on you. Don't wait. He's coming. Get ready. Paul doesn't want us to get, to get caught out living in darkness when the Lord returns. He has this analogy of, of the time and the day, which is sort of between night and, and full-on day. If your wife has recently gone back to full-time teaching, <laughs> and you have to get up now every day before dawn, you realize that, that there's this point in the day when it's 
you can't see the sun, but it's clearly no longer night. Then there's this this lightening of the sky that is is this period between nighttime and, and full daytime. Paul says that's where we live. That's what time it is. But in the resurrection, dawn began to break. But until Jesus fully returns, it's it's still not quite fully daytime. We live in that period where, where we can't see the sun, but we know it's getting brighter. But he says that the, the day is coming. And with every breath we take, it's coming sooner that that sun will be brightly shining. Jesus will return. He will return to judge, and He will return to set things right, and, and you want to be found living in the light, not hiding in the darkness when Jesus returns. He says it's not an option to just do no harm. It, it, it's not an option. You know, if it were, we could go and stand on some hill and watch the sunrise and stare at it as it comes up and say, oh, isn't that pretty? Aren't we glad to be here watching the sun come up? Aren't we glad to be standing here watching Jesus return? Paul would warn us, we probably don't want to be caught standing watching, doing no good, waiting for Jesus to return. We don't want to be doing business as usual. Business as usual for Paul is these activities of the night, these things that, that we do in the darkness because we're embarrassed or should be to do them in the light. He wants us to not go back to those things of, of the night. For those for us, those things are frivolity, he says, and indulgence, sleeping around, dissipation, bickering, and grabbing everything inside. It is those things that are about me, my wants, my desires. Everything I want when I want it. He says, don't get caught in that. That is the opposite of love. It's even the opposite of self-love. When we're all about self-indulgence, we can't love others well. We can't love ourselves well. We can't love God. Love. Some of the most unhappy people I've known have been those who are just about themselves. We're created in God's image, which means we're given the capacity to love. To love in ways like He loves, self giving ways. Paul wants us to get this thing right before the Lord returns. He wants us to get about this unusual business of love. Let me pause there and make sure we understand what love means. You don't love pizza. You can't. You can like pizza. You can have a preference for pizza. Pizza can be your favorite food, but you cannot love pizza. And as soon as we start using the word love for something like pizza, we don't have another word left for how we're going to talk about how we are called to be in relationship with one another. So I know we say it. But we can't do it. We can't love pizza. The word's been hijacked, and it's time we take it back. We're called to love people, to love God. To love God is not, and to love people, it's not always about how we feel. It's frequently not about how we feel. We, we feel inclined towards pizza. It, when we love, it, it's about a commitment. A commitment that is born in, in a desire to do for another, because we want good for another. That's how we can be told by Paul, by Jesus, to love our enemies.
To love our enemies does not mean to like them. It doesn't mean to have a preference for them. It doesn't mean even to approve of them. To love our enemies is to want good for them. When they command us to love our enemies, it's because we are called to want good, not harm for them. Even called to do good, not harm. So love is not about preference. Love is about commitment. And love is born when we decide or are drawn into a commitment like that. When we determine that we are called to, to show devotion, to, to, to show kindness, to show warmth. Now we see this in marriages, or we, we pray to see this in marriages, where, where we see someone who's, who's not there because they felt something when they were a teenager about another person. We, we see people who... Whatever they felt as a teenager still is lived out. Marriages collapse when, when, when people decide how I felt is, is what my commitment level will be. When, when our marriages are based on feelings, the next attractive, interesting person comes along and our feelings can shift. When marriages and relationships, when body of Christ brothers and sisters in Christ relationships are based on a commitment to God and a commitment to one another that's born in devotion, that's born in warmth, that's born in kindness, that's born in, in seeking the good for another, then it is truly love. It is not feeling. It's love. Can you imagine what it would be like if, if God determined how God related to us based on a feeling? Today they're cute. I love them. Yesterday they were boring. I got tired. Tomorrow they'll be bad. I'll hate them. If God's commitment to us were based on a feeling, it'd be a very sad relationship. Alright, so we're not about business like that. We're about unusual business like what you see on the screen. That is last year's junk I mean, treasure collection <laughs> in the gym. That, that is what Saturday morning at 6.45 will look like right before 7.15 when half of that's gone. That is love in action. The kind of love we're called to. See, love in action, this unusual business of loving people is not just for those we like. It's not just for those we agree with. It's not just for those we feel sorry for. Love in action is often for people we don't know. On, on Saturday, we'll have some fun with the people who walk through those doors and we'll enjoy them and hopefully see some happy faces and hopefully they'll see this is a good place to be. But Saturday afternoon, when the Receipts come in and we've sold some sand art and some clothes and some treasures and some foods and, and all the things that will have been sold on Saturday. We'll put all that money in a pile we're going to mail it to Columbia. And then Columbia is going to distribute it to Spartanburg Methodist College and, and to Claflin University. But they're also going to send it, some of it to Nashville, Tennessee. And, and some of it's going on around the world. Places like Japan where tsunamis hit. And, and for the majority of the people who receive the benefit of all the work that goes into this fall festival, we won't know a single one of them. The majority of the work will be done for people who never have the opportunity to come to St. James and say, thank you for what you did. Now business as usual would say, where's the benefit for us in that? Why would we do something like that for somebody who would never come around here and say thanks? Here's my contribution. But unusual business says, we love Jesus. So we love the people He loves. Even the people we'll never know. 